in your life. Hope everybody's healthy in your household. Uh, I wanted to give a little bit of review uh, on the quiz that we took over acid bases. There were some common questions, some misperceptions, mis, uh, I don't want to how to characterize it, some misunderstandings, I guess, uh, on how to do some titration. And so I'd like to get that straightened out before we take our test uh, uh, this coming week on Wednesday. So I went through and I made some PowerPoints for a few of the questions that were on the test. And I hope if you take the time to go through this, it'll make a lot more sense to you. So we're dealing with uh, burettes and titration. And I'll just take some test questions exactly as they were written. So here we go. Let's get right into this. So here was a question here. It says, what volume in milliliters of 0.003 molar HCl is required to neutralize 30 mils of a 0 0.0100 molar base of calcium hydroxide? And I gave you the balanced chemical equation. Now, what many of you did was this. You maybe wrote down the information. I'm looking for a volume with this molarity. And I'm given over here this volume and this molarity. So what you thought you could do is simply say molarity of the acid times volume of the acid equal molarity of the base times volume of the base. You plugged in the numbers 0 0.003 times x equal 0 0.001 times 30. And you found the answer 10 milliliters, which was a choice. Unfortunately, it was the wrong choice. Now let's talk about why that was, why that is not what we need to do to solve the problem. So let's think about the dissociation of hydrochloric acid. When HCl dissociates, it forms H plus and Cl one minus. If the HCl is 0 0.003 molar, then the H plus is 0 0.003 molar and when we look at the calcium hydroxide, if it's 0 0.001 molar, the calcium's 0 0.001 molar, but what is the hydroxide concentration? I hope you didn't say 0 0.001 molar. You note that there's a coefficient two, so it actually is double. It has the equivalent of 0 0.002 molar. The proper term is normality, but if we understand that it acts as though it's 0 0.002 molar, that will work for us just fine. So in order for a neutralization to work, the amount of acid has to be equal to the amount of base. And the way we're gonna do this is MV number equal MV number. The number refers to how many protons or how many hydroxides are produced. So in this first case for the HCl, I is one. For every mole of HCl, it produces one mole of hydrogen ion. Now look at the second equation for calcium hydroxide. What is the I going to be equal to here for the hydroxide? Two, excellent. It will indeed be two. Now we can go ahead and plug into this equation here. So we have the uh, molarity of the acid, 0 0.003 molar acid, the volume I don't know, and I is one from the way it dissociates. The base is 0 0.001 molar, the volume is 30 mils, and the number here is a two because it makes two OHs. And when you solve that, you get the correct answer, 20 mils of 0 0.003 molar HCl. Now, let me move myself out of the way here a little bit. I think I can do this. There we go. I'll put myself up here. Now, if you wanted to use M1V1 equal M2V2, you certainly can. You just have to know how to use it properly. So in order to do this, we're going to put in the molarity of the H+, plus, and I box it here, 0 0.003 molar times the volume equals the molarity of the base. Notice the base, the OH, is 0 0.002 molar times 30. And if you solve that, you will indeed get the same answer, 20 milliliters. All right. I hope that one makes sense. I'll just ask you one additional question here, I guess. Yeah, you probably feel like Adam Sandler. You're the smartest man alive. Um, what would the pH be at this point? What do you think? Well, if you said seven, you are correct. When you neutralize something, you have an equal amount of H plus and OH in solution, and that gives you a pH of seven. All right, let's try a couple more of these. 
let me move my face down here again. So here's another question from the test. A 0 0.472 molar nitric acid was used to titrate 0.388 molar aluminum hydroxide. If the initial volume reading on the acid was 34.42 and the final reading was 41.9, what the question is asking is, if the base started at 63.25 mils, what's the final volume? So this is asking us to do a similar type calculation of a neutralization, but then we have a little twist. We have to figure out how much base was added and then figure out where that would actually put it on our burette. So the first step we need to do is figure out how much acid we added. Well, the acid went from 34.42 and dropped down to 41.9. So it went from 34.42 down to 41.9. So we added 7.48 mils of acid. Now, as we stated in the earlier example, the moles of acid or the amount of acid has to equal the moles of base. Now, we're going to use an MV number equal MV number. Now, let's look at what we're dealing with. We have nitric acid. Nitric acid is HNO3. It's a monoprotic acid, so it deals with and produces one proton. So if the nitric acid is 0 0.0472, so is the H plus. In other words, I is one. For the aluminum hydroxide, you have to write out the formula for that. Aluminum hydroxide dissociates into an aluminum three plus ion and three hydroxides. And for this, I is three. Notice that for every one aluminum hydroxide, you make three OH. I, I could, if I wanted to put in my concentration 0.388 molar, the aluminum would be 0.388 molar, and the hydroxide would be three times that, or 1.164. Now, I'm going to go ahead and initially, I'm going to move myself over here, I'm going to solve this thing using MV number equal MV number. So, well, I guess before I go there, let's try it using just MV equal MV. Now, if you do MV equals MV, the M here refers to the hydrogen ion concentration, and the blue M refers to the hydroxide ion concentration. So when we're putting this in, it would look like point, well, I have a typo there. It should be 0 0.0472 times 7.48 equal 1.164 times X. Now, if you ignore my typo, when you solve that, I believe you will get 3.03 mils of added base. Now, that is not the answer to the question, although it was one of the choices. You have to understand the initial reading on the burette was 63.25. And when you add stuff, the number actually is going to get bigger on the burette. Some of you took 63.25 minus 3.03. Some just cho chose 3.03 for an answer. But what you needed to do is take the 63.25 and add the 3.03 mils. And so the final volume on that burette would be reading 66.28 mils. Now, um, if you don't want to do it this way, the alternative way to solve it is to use MV number, MV number. So for this, I'm going to use the molarity 0.472 times the volume 7.48 mils times the number is 1 because it makes 1 H+. Plus. For the molarity of the base, I'm going to use the actual base concentration, 0.388. I don't know its volume, but the number of ions that it makes is 3. Solving this, I get my answer, 3.03 mils of the base must be added. So I take that and add it to the original amount, and final volume is 66.28 mils. Again, that was a rather uh, challenging question. There was one similar to that on your homework, and that's why I put it on the, on the test. Let's try maybe three more. All right, let's look at this one. Calculate the molarity of sulfuric acid. Uh, if 35 mils of this acid is neutralized by 75 mils of this base, and I gave you the balanced chemical equation. So... We know that this is true. The amount of acid has to equal the amount of base when something is neutralized. So I'm going to use an MV number equal MV number. 
looking at sulfuric acid when this dissociates, the number that I would use here hopefully is, you'll tell me, two. Good. And for the sodium hydroxide, when it dissociates, what is the number going to be? One. Very good. So if this is 0.265, the NaOH, Na is, two, is 0.265, and the OH is 0.265. So I is one. So let's plug in the numbers. I don't know the uh, molarity of the acid. That's my unknown. I know that it took 35 mils, and the number associated with sulfuric acid is 2. For the base, the base is 0.265 molar, and I use 75 mils of it, and the number is 1. So when I solve that, I get 0.2839 molar sulfuric acid. I'm hoping these look a little bit more straightforward now that you've seen a few more worked out. Let's try another one. Here we go. What is the molarity of nitric acid if 24.62 mils is required to neutralize 1.75 grams of sodium oxalate? Now, uh, to start with, I hope you recognize the nitric acid. That's an acid. Now, if you get rid of an acid, it must take a base. So the sodium oxalate is acting as a base. It's not an Arrhenius base in the traditional sense of something that has a hydroxide in it, but instead it's a Lewis base because it can accept the proton from the hydrogen. Now, the other thing you're gonna learn about are conjugate acids and bases. Whatever starts off as a base, then what it turns into is called its conjugate acid. And whatever starts as the acid, it becomes the conjugate base. Now, there won't be a lot of questions about conjugate acid base, but I put that in here just um, to kind of talk about those terms. Now, at this point, you might feel like this little child here, a little bit confused, a little bit lost, thinking, what is going on? Well, let's get rid of the child, and let's get rid of all of this stuff here, and let's refocus ourselves to the problem. In order to solve this problem, my thought process is, if we know an amount of grams, we can convert that to moles. And let's do that first. So let's figure out how many moles of nitric acid is equal to this amount of sodium oxalate. So the first thing I need to do is figure out the molar mass of sodium oxalate. Two sodiums, two times 23 is 46, plus two times carbon is 12, another 24. Four oxygens at 16 is 64. That's 134 grams per mole of sodium oxalate. We'll go ahead and get the grams of sodium oxalate to cancel like that. And then now we use the coefficients from the balanced chemical equation. One mole of sodium oxalate will be required for every two moles of nitric acid. And moles of sodium oxalate cancel like that. And we're left with a number of moles of nitric acid. Now, at this point, if we know the moles and we know a volume, we can probably figure a molarity. Does this look familiar? That little triangle, molarity, moles over liters. So now what we're gonna do is substitute in some values. So for the number of moles, we have right here 0 0.02612 moles. And of course, we have to be careful. Our volume initially is in milliliters, and we know there's a thousand milliliters in a liter. So when we put this in down here, it comes out 0 0.00. 2462 liters. Well, that works out on the calculator to have a molar concentration of the nitric acid to be 10.61. I hope you feel like Albert Einstein and super smart about all this chemistry. Let's try one more question and then I'll, I'll let you be and hopefully that'll be a good thorough review of what you need to be able to do. Um, well, I guess instead of me doing an additional question, I guess what we can do is think about uh, instead um, what you need to be doing to get ready for the uh, test. So if we're looking at the calendar, let's go there real quick if we could. If we go to the calendar here, uh, well, I'm recording this on Saturday, you're going to do some weak acids. There's not going to be a lot of questions on weak acids on the test. Um, know that a weak acid has a very low Ka, 
and you'll have to know what that means. And um, besides that, there's no calculations of weak acids. So I might go through some stuff with calculations, but that won't be asked in your test. On the 28th, if you take the time to look at the calendar here, you're going to see a PowerPoint that you really, really should go through. It's going to go through uh, all of the stuff that will be on the test, the type information you need in the test. Finally, I would just encourage you to please keep up. This is a no danger, no hassle for you. If you bomb the test, it's going to be dropped. It's not going to affect your grade. So I would, I would really strongly encourage you to do your best. Try on the test. Uh, try to learn the material. We uh, still have a few weeks of school left. After we take this test on acid bases, you will start a unit on gas laws. It is our final unit. There'll be a quiz over gas laws, and then we'll have a test. I heard uh, through the grapevine, I don't know if it's been officially announced, but I'm going to tell you the uh, school has decided there will be no final exams. So when we're through with the gas laws test, we are through for the year. So that's some great news. Uh, I, I do miss you. I'm looking forward to seeing you maybe next school year. Stop by, say hello, and we'll catch up at that point. Okay, good luck. Send me questions if you have any. Take care. Bye-bye.